So I've misplaced my entrance reducer. I have two of them and they've gone MIA. So I just found a piece of wood. It's not perfect, but it does the trick to minimize the size of the entrance. Um, you absolutely must do that this time of year because if you don't, yellow jackets and hornets are going to try their best to get in that hive. And so <clears throat> the best way for them to defend themselves is to make the entrance smaller so they have a lot easier time keeping those jerks out of the hive. I'm just so excited to see this amount of pollen going in. That tells me my queen is still laying eggs and they are busy, busy, busy. It's a beautiful sight. So right after I filmed that last little bit, I looked over to where I used to have a hive and look. There they are. <laughs> the two entrance reducers. I must have tucked them in there so that they were had easy access to put in this fall and I just forgot. <laughs> oh well. It's the story of my life right there. The Granny Smith apple tree has already been completely harvested. We didn't get anything off the Golden Delicious, but our Pink Lady tree, they're not quite ready, but they're almost ready. And sadly, they're already getting robbed by um, squirrels and whatnot. There's a lot less apples up here than there were. So they're small, they're not pretty, but they're organic and they're gonna be delicious. So, excited about that. Hopefully they'll be ready in the next couple of weeks. What I love about these blackberries is that they keep producing until first frost. So we still have green, red, and look, even some with flowers. And even though we've had a little bit of a cold snap, not a frost or anything, but we've had a little bit of chilly weather. We still got a whole lot more hot coming. Like this week, it's going to be close to the 90s again. So I am anxious for cooler weather, but I am so thankful we're still getting berries. My raspberries, I know it's an ugly looking patch right now, but they are absolutely loaded. This has been the best uh, raspberry harvest I've ever had. I mean, they're just everywhere, just loaded down. This is that Heritage Red, y'all, if you haven't watched it in my older videos, but <clears throat> look at this. And some of them are just, the branches are almost breaking. They're just so overloaded. Look at that. Mm. Mm. So, so good. So you can imagine what I'm busy doing. I'm busy putting up raspberry jam because that's one of our absolute favorites ever. Look at that. Is raspberry jam absolutely the best? Um, mm. The thing is, is <laughs> when the kids come out here, they eat so much they're literally sick. <laughs> anyway, I'm thankful for this great harvest of raspberries. This is absolutely fabulous. The only downside about harvesting berries this time of year is you have to watch out for the jerk wasps and hornets that'll be on it. They're all trying to get their last little bit of nourishment before the cold weather sets in so you just got to watch where you put your hands anyway i hope i'm going to have another row of raspberries next year so i can increase my yield but i mean look i still got blossoms look at that and then some regular berries so these guys will i've literally picked raspberries in november before so as long as the weather it can handle a little bit of chill but as long as it stays warm i'm going to keep getting raspberries Highly recommend growing them. Here are those gourds that I planted back in July. I think it was July. Maybe it was August. I can't remember. Anyway, um, we had a little tiny window like a week of rain a while back 
and I took the advantage and planted some seeds, even though it was super late. But look, they've already trailed way up over there into the chicken pen. Lots of little gourds. See them? Aren't they the cutest thing you ever saw? Anyway, they're doing really well. I'm glad I decided to do that, even though I knew it was a risk and a waste of time, but it wasn't. Um, some of them are a little warty. Look how cute. Anyway, just wanted to show you guys that. And then my gourds that go up over the chicken pen. The vine is dying back, which is what you want it to do before you can harvest the gourds. But now, let me walk around this way. With the vine dead, you can really see how many gourds are in there before you kind of, you saw a bunch, but you didn't see. I knew there were more than what I could see because they would be hidden. Um. Anyway, so yeah, here they are. All different sizes. I like this one. It's a great size. Lots of them over here. And I see y'all. I see you guys. That one's got kind of a funky little curve to it. And there's more over here. There's some bigger ones in there. It's about the size of this one, this one. Some skinny ones. There's some skinny ones in there. So anyway, just wanted to show you how that, how those gourds are looking this time of year. All right, the figs are doing fantastic. They are awesome. And I've been sitting here watching them and forever and ever and ever. I mean, look at them. Every branch is loaded. Now I say that our figs are doing great. This bush is doing great. That one over there, don't get me started on it. I'm gonna get fired up just thinking about it. Anyway, um, that one's doing nothing. This is my smallest of the two, and this has been producing since year one, Chicago Hardy. The other one's a Chicago Hardy, so I can't say it's because it's a Chicago Hardy, because the other one didn't do in diddly squat, but this one has always been fantastic. And I just spotted our first ripe one the other day, and I found another ripe one just now. You know it's ripe when it's like droopy like that and squishy, and they'll even kind of turn amber colored. This one's actually kind of busting from all the rain, but I'm still gonna eat it. I don't care if it's got a hole in it. Mmm. 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 Y'all, fresh figs are absolutely delectable. There's another one. I'll save that for the kids because usually it's a fight to see who can get the right figs for the day. So I'm gonna let some somebody else. Mary knows that they're getting ripe because I split the first one with her and she hasn't told her brothers on purpose because she doesn't want them to know. <laughs> what a sweet little sister. Anyway, look at them. If I get enough, I will have some fig preserves to sell. So here's the thing about figs is you may get a lot of figs and they may be covered, but if you get any type of early frost or freeze, it's over. I don't care how loaded down they are, you're gonna lose every single one of them. So that's, a, it's a kind of a, a gamble every year. Um, last year we hardly got any. This year that the tree is completely loaded down, but we are really, really inching close to that first frost. And I just hope that we can get as many off of here before that happens. So I pulled some honey the other day and these are my leftover frames. Um, for any of you beekeeper guys, gals. Um, I always cut the comb off the frame. I didn't cut it all, as you can see. And then I just lay them all up here and let the bees rob whatever's left over. Now, it's been out here for several days, so I'm ready to actually clean them up and put them up. But um, I wanted to make sure that everybody got what they wanted before I did that. Nothing is wasted on the farm. So I had to do something really difficult a couple of weeks ago. One of the babies that was born of Miss Maple, there she is, there's a mama. Um, and of course it was my favorite one, the one I like the most. You've probably seen pictures of it. It was the ginger colored woman's with the black spots, a little girl. Um, the only one that looked different, uh, she was born, I discovered without a rectum. And that was just a really tough decision to make because 
it's not an option to take them to the vet on an animal that is meant for food. So, um, it was just a tough decision. I did the right thing. I know it was the right thing, but it was really, really hard. That was definitely, I can say, one of the hardest moments that I've ever had on the farm. I hope you don't ever have to do that, but um, in the event that you do, you somehow muster up enough strength because you know it's the right thing to do. So anyway, that's going down in history as one of my hardest days on the farm. So I'm gonna show you a quick video of the three remaining piglets that we have, and two are females and one is a male. They are absolutely precious. Hello, my little babies. Hello! Are you absolutely beautiful? Hello, piggies. Come here. Come here. Come here, baby. That's the baby. Oh, I know. You're going to be jealous. Are y'all going to come and try to eat? Hmm? All right, so this is the little boy. And they love their belly scratches. They do. They love belly scratch. And they already plop over. And let you love on them. Are those your children? Hmm. Oh, bullseye. Bullseye. <laughs> you are precious too. I love you too. But look at these babies. Oh, they're just the sweetest. So, um, we're gonna, I think we're gonna keep him. You can have him fixed. Um, and then I've got this female here that's available. And then a female right over there that's available. So you guys just let me know if you're interested in a little coon coonie. They don't get real big, so this is the size they're going to get. And they are absolutely the sweetest pigs you'll ever have. I mean, watch her. She's going to fall over because I'm scratching her. See? Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Anyway, they are a lard pig, so you're not getting them for big slabs of bacon. But you're going to get lard, and you're going to get the best pork chops you've ever had in your life, and sausage, and they're easy to manage. They don't root. I mean, I can walk you. You can come over to the farm, and I can walk you everywhere, and you will not find where they've been rooting. There's a couple of places where they roll around in the mud, but they don't root at all. They are pasture pig. And this is our boar. And as you can see, he's just as gentle as a little puppy. <clears throat> Everybody gets along. You can even keep goats with them. So they're very, very economical. And they're not uh, scary. Because, I mean, big pigs are terrifying to me. And if I, I'm not going to own an animal that I'm scared of. So we've never had an issue They're, uh, with these pigs. They're super easy, very friendly. The kids can come in here and uh, just highly recommend. And you can look it up, look up Cooney Cooney online and you'll see this K-U-N-E, K-U-N-E, which means fat and round, obviously. Anyway, just wanted to give you an update on the baby pigs. They're precious and you're a good daddy. I think she may be pregnant, but I'm not 100% sure. So. All right, guys, that's it for today. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick update on the garden for September and the farm. Um, if you guys have any questions about pigs or raspberries or anything like that, you just let me know. And we'll see you guys on the next video. It's a good log.